Hello and welcome to this video which is the introduction to atomic structure. So sometimes uh, the things that make up an atom can be really, really confusing to people because that we're going to be using a lot of words that you've never come across before. But I just want you to start by thinking about a house. And it doesn't matter how big a house is, it all has the same basic components. It has a door and they have windows and chimneys. And the bigger the house is, the bigger the, the, the larger number of window or doors that it actually has. All I want you to think about with the complicated words we're going to be using today, they are just parts of something larger. So this is our atom, and our atoms are really, really tiny. A human hair, one of the tiny hairs in your head, is the, the width of it is a millions of atoms. So these, these are so small that you can never be able to see them with, it, with your own eye, which is why sometimes people have quite a lot of trouble um, visualising what's going on or trying to remember all of the words. What you need to know is the bit in the middle is called the nucleus. Not to be confused with the biology nucleus, this is the chemistry nucleus, and all it means is the bit in the middle. And then outside we have shells. Now there are two things in the nucleus here in the middle, we have protons and we have neutrons. And on the shells around the outside, we have electrons. Now I've drawn the electrons here as crosses and I've put them in pairs. That's just a chemistry convention. Um, I like where students to draw electrons as crosses and to draw them in pairs, but you don't have to. You also need to know that the nucleus this bit in the middle here is the heavy bit. That's where all the weight is concentrated. The electrons, which sit around the shells on the outside, weigh so little that we say they weigh nothing. The heavy bits are the protons and the neutrons in the middle. So, to make our lives nice and easy, we say that protons weigh one, we say that neutrons weigh one, and we say that electrons weigh nothing. Now, protons are in the nucleus, neutrons are also in the nucleus, and electrons are in the shells. So you can see the electrons on the shells on the outside, they weigh nothing, so we don't worry about that too much. And then the protons and neutrons, the bits in the middle, they weigh a lot, so that's what we're going to look at next. So to look at this a bit more, we're going to now going to switch up here at the table. And if you have a copy in front of you, fantastic. If not, don't worry. So on your periodic table, there are lots of boxes. And in the boxes, there could be two numbers, a symbol, and maybe a name down here as well. So the mass number, it's generally going to be the number at top. It's going to be the large number of the two. And it tells us how much an element weighs. So your mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It tells us how much that nucleus in the middle weighs. It tells us how many neutrons and protons it has in there. The atomic number down at the bottom is going to be the smaller one of the two, and that tells us what the element is. The atomic number is unique to each element, and this is equal to the number of protons, and it's also equal to the number of electrons. The symbol is the letter that tells us what the element is. And the fantastic thing about the periodic table is that it's the same whatever country you're in and whatever language you speak. So I've been lucky enough to work in a number of different um, countries and uh, work with people that speak a wide variety of different languages and we've all been able to use a periodic table easily to communicate because it stays the same. It's like chemistry's own special language. So, you need to be able to use a periodic table to find the number of protons and the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. So, the number of protons is nice and easy. It is just the atomic number. So, the smaller of the two in the box, um, protons is equal to the atomic number. For an atom, the number of electrons is also equal to the atomic number. The number of neutrons is slightly trickier to find. It is the mass number minus the atomic number. So 
So I'm just going to talk you through a couple of examples. So we'll start with carbon. The symbol for carbon is C. The mass number is 12 and the atomic number is 6. So the number of protons, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number and the atomic number is 6, so carbon has 6 protons. Number of electrons, the number of electrons is equal to the atomic number, the atomic number here is 6, so carbon has 6 electrons. Neutrons is equal to the mass number, which is 12, minus the atomic number, which is 6, so uh, carbon has 6 neutrons. So the next one, fluorine, symbol is F, mass number is 19, atomic number is 9. So protons is equal to the atomic number, so fluorine has 9 neutrons. Electrons also equal to the atomic number, so fluorine has 9 electrons. Neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number, so 19 minus 9, so fluorine has 10 neutrons. And just one final example for you. So, potassium, the symbol K, the mass number is 39. The atomic number is 19. So atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So um, potassium has 19 protons and 19 electrons, which is also equal to the atomic number. The number of neutrons is the mass number, which is 39, minus the atomic number, which is 19. So potassium has 20 neutrons. The next thing you need to know about the structure of the atom are the charges that different things have. So in the nucleus we have protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge and that is plus one. Neutrons have a neutral charge, they have no overall charge. Electrons, which are on the shells on the outside, have a negative charge and that is negative one. So I always like my students to have a table like this. So protons are in the nucleus. Neutrons are in the nucleus as well. Electrons are in the shells. Protons have a mass of 1. Neutrons have a mass of 1. Electrons have a mass of 0. And the information I've just told you, protons have a charge of plus 1. Neutrons have a charge of 0. And electrons have a charge of minus 1. So atoms have no overall charge. So I've got two examples here, oxygen and lithium. Now if we can see from um, our atomic and our mass number that I've worked out that oxygen has eight protons, eight neutrons and eight electrons. And I've just told you that protons are positive. So plus one times eight equals plus eight. Zero, which is the charge of neutrons, times eight equals zero. Electrons have a charge of minus one and there are eight electrons so minus one times eight equals minus eight. If we add all of those up plus eight, zero and minus eight we get zero overall charge. So protons, um, lithium has three protons, four neutrons and three electrons. I've worked that out again using the mass number and the atomic number. So protons have a plus one charge and we have three of them, so that's plus three. Neutrons have a neutral charge, and there are four of them, so that's zero. Electrons have a minus one charge, and there are three of them, so that equals minus three. Plus three, zero, and minus three overall make zero. So the next bit, um, you don't need to know, it won't come up in your GCSE, but it's very interesting and will make you sound smart if you tell people. So I hope you'll stay for it. So in your GCSE and in your A-level, you will see um, atoms drawn like this with a large nucleus and the shells very closely around them. This isn't actually what they look like. This is what they look like. The nucleus is tiny. It is such a very, very tiny, small part. And the shells are the massive things taking up all the space around the outside. The reason we draw it the other way is because the nucleus takes up all of the mass. And the shells, the electrons, have virtually no mass. It's a bit of a weird way of drawing it, but um, it makes it nice and easy for us to explain it to you. So the majority of an atom is empty space. 
and the bit that you can impress everyone with, if we removed all of the empty space from you, or me, you would be smaller than a grain of salt. And I have some grains of salt here, and I have my um, stylus next to it, so you can see. And yes, I know some of you are going to tell me that all of the grains of salt are different sizes. I imagine Primrose is going to be one of these teeny tiny grains of salt. But this is just to illustrate to you that um, the, the shells, the electrons, take up so much space in you. And that all of the mass is in the the nucleus, the protons, the neutrons, if we took out all of the empty space and squashed all of your protons and neutrons together, you would be absolutely tiny.